All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and today we're going to dive into two completely unrelated adventures. On one hand, I've created a speaker that sounds realistic, and someone asked me if it would work with voice, and I tried it with guitar, and it works well. So I'm recording this video using four microphones, left, right, down, and up, and I will play it back through the speaker and throughout the video I'll switch back and forth between real me and speaker reproduction me and uh, we can see how well this thing reproduces voice and to give me material and have something to talk about I'm going to talk about impedance audio impedance and different um, ideas or perceptions or descriptions of impedance so let's go ahead and get into it. Impedance is frequency dependent resistance. Resistance is as it sounds. It's the resistive, uh, it's resistive to the flow of electricity. So a resistor um, reduces or makes it hard for electricity to flow through. Impedance is a frequency dependent version of resistance. And to think about that in real world terms, um, let's see, what would be a frequency dependent resistance? Let's say that we had a wire mesh and the wire mesh had openings in it and we dumped a bunch of sand and gravel and rocks through it. And the sand would drop right through and the pebbles would drop through, but the rocks get held back. So it offers very little resistance to sand. The sand just pours right through it and water pours right through it as if it's almost not there. So it's a very, very low impedance, very low resistance for, let's say, small things, high, um, for high frequencies, little things, and for rocks and pebbles that are about the size of it, it offers some resistance. Maybe it takes them a little while to get through. And for bigger rocks, it can't get through at all. So it's a very high impedance for lower frequencies or larger items. So a mesh would be a good example of a high pass filter. It is only letting the small stuff through and the big stuff runs into resistance. Um, what would be a low pass filter? A low pass filter could be something like a fan. If you had a really powerful fan blowing upwards and um, you dump that same pile of rock, sand and gravel on there. Well, the rocks don't care about that fan. They're just going to drop straight to the bottom. It's passing those low frequencies. No problem. But the sand and smaller rocks, the sand gets blown away up into the air. And the medium-sized rocks run in, maybe they take a little while falling, or they get differentiated. So there is a low-pass filter. The larger frequencies or items pass through it, no problem, and the smaller ones don't. In electronics, a good example of a high-pass filter would be a capacitor. A capacitor will let high frequencies through and not the low frequencies. And the bigger the capacitor, the bigger the holes in the mesh, and the more low frequencies it would let through. Now, we also talk about impedance another way. We talk about impedance for like this output is a low impedance output on this console, or this microphone has a mid impedance, or this guitar has a high impedance output. And then we look at the impedances for an input. The input of a console might have a medium high impedance of 10K or something. Um, we might have a guitar amp with a very high impedance input, a uh, tube amp. And we might have, um, I don't know, a microphone preamp that's also a low impedance input with a transformer, like a 200 ohm or whatever. All right, so we've got all these various impedances on inputs and outputs. How can we picture that in our minds? If you think of an output, a low impedance output would be like a shovel. 
So you can, if you have a pile of rocks and leaves all mixed together, or let's say, no, let's go a different way. Let's say you have a big pile of leaves and a big pile of rocks and gravel. And you've got two tools. You've got a shovel and a leaf blower. Okay? The shovel would be like a low impedance output. It doesn't have a lot of motion to it, but it's got a lot of push. You could shovel the leaves, but it's going to take a while to do it. You can shovel the rocks. A low impedance output will drive anything. A high impedance output is like the leaf blower. It's got a lot of wind. It can blow all the leaves away really quickly. It's not going to do really well with the rocks. And the same thing happens with a high impedance output. If you plug it into a low impedance input, our pile of rocks... It's not going to do a lot. It's going to get dragged down. The wind is not going to move it. If you plug a low impedance output into a high impedance input, it's going to have some signal, but it's not going to do a lot of work. It's not going to move all those leaves around. What are some other examples of impedance uh, that we run into in everyday life? Well, a transformer in electronics converts a low impedance to a high impedance or a high impedance to a low impedance or as, an impedance or as a buffer between the two. There's examples of transformers in real everyday life. A gear shift, your transmission, is a transformer. It takes the relatively high impedance of the car engine that's spinning fast and it gears it down to first gear and moves it very slow so it turns the leaf blower type engine into the shovel type wheel motion and then as you get up to speed maybe that transformer goes to one to one your gear shift is a, a straight pass through or you have overdrive where the wheels are spinning faster or the transmission spinning faster than the engine. Um, other examples, so what kind of cars would have different impedances? Um, walking, fairly low impedance. Riding a bike, a little bit higher impedance. If you really get on a steep hill, which would be a very low impedance adventure, you get off and walk your bike because your legs have more power. You don't go as far as fast. The bike goes farther faster, but it has a hard time with more resistive environments. F1 car, high impedance. Bulldozer, low impedance. Um, we can look at all kinds of uh, jet engine, high impedance engine, air, very high impedance medium. It, if we move, it, there's not a lot of motion. A shovel, if you're trying to shovel a pile of air, it would take a long time to shovel the air from here to there, but a jet engine will move the air fast enough to get the plane off the ground. Another transformer that's interesting is audio horns, like a horn driver, the output of a speaker going into a horn. A horn is an audio transformer, an impedance transformer for acoustics. It takes the relatively low impedance of the driver, which has got a lot of power. You put your finger on it, you can feel it, it'll move, you throw some dirt on it, it'll bounce around. I mean, this is a pretty powerful thing that isn't moving very far. And then you've got air, which is very high impedance. It moves, uh, you, very, you feel very little resistance when you move around. So now you've got the speaker kind of moving its little butt off, working hard, and the air is just very soft. A horn is a transformer. It takes, I think I have a horn here, it takes a fairly small opening and it converts that to a bigger opening. So if it moves a little bit of air here, a lot of air moves here. Now it does put more load on the driver and it has other issues, but it's really just an impedance transformer. A conversion of the impedance from low to high. Now, like with all transformers, transmissions and uh, audio horns or audio transformers, there are issues involved. Transformers don't do this without 
you having to pay a cost. Um, an audio transformer usually barely makes it up to 20K. It's got more limited bandwidth. If you don't use a transformer, you have full bandwidth. A piece of wire has full bandwidth. When you go through a transformer, you lose bandwidth and you lose a little efficiency. You might get voltage gain, you get output gain. Same thing with an audio horn. Here we're going to gain, we're not gaining any more efficiency, we're more efficiently creating or transitioning the output of the speaker into the air, the low impedance speaker to the high impedance air. And you can hear my voice when I talk into the horn, it gets louder than when I talk without the horn. But also you'll notice that the horn has a more limited bandwidth. The transformer is not full bandwidth. It cuts off some of the lows and highs. This is an advantage of horns is it increases the SPL and the conversion efficiency. One of the disadvantages of horns is it limits the bandwidth and the frequency response isn't as flat and you have to EQ it. So you pay a fidelity or frequency response hit in exchange for that efficiency. Same thing with the transmission. The transmission has all these little gears in there that have to muck around and play with each other and they lose some efficiency and you have to move between gears and it's got some extra weight. Now there's some extra mass being rotated. If you don't have the transmission, it will lose less power. But sometimes we need that transformer to get to the velocities or volume levels that we need to get based on the size of the power plant, the engine. Another example of a low impedance output would be an amplifier. A power amplifier, an audio power amp, has a low impedance out and a very high voltage out. A microphone has a fairly low impedance out and a very low voltage out. The output impedance, if it's low or high, is not really connected to its voltage. The way to tell if something has a low impedance and is to put resistance on it. If you put resistance on it and the impede and the output voltage, the output power is unchanged, then it's a lower impedance in comparison to the load or the resistance. If you put a resistance on it and it slows down, the voltage drops. If it gets reduced, then you have a higher impedance than the load or the load is putting a burden on it. A good example of that, if you're driving in a car and you add a feather into the trunk, it's not gonna make any difference in the maximum velocity. But if you're on a bicycle and you put 600 pounds of bricks onto the bike rack, it's gonna slow you down a lot. So the amount of resistance, the amount of load that you put on something, the impact that it has will tell you about the impedance and when we have test rigs and test stuff for audio and electronics the way we determine the impedance of the, of the way we determine the impedance of something is to put a load on it and see what the impact of that load is and from there we can calculate the impedance and if we do that at various frequencies we can now determine the impedance or the resistance to that load at those various frequencies. Cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed this rundown on impedance. And also, I'm really curious to see how this speaker sounds with my voice as I go edit this and we switch back between the two. If you like this about the realistic speaker, check out my other videos I'm doing on it. Um, on my channel here and as far as audio knowledge I do a lot of videos on all kinds of subjects in pro and other audio realms and I'd love you to come hang out and make some comments and let me know what you think cool cool all right cool cool and um, let's hear how my voice sounds in relation to this voice Fun stuff. Ooh, me wrestling around. All right. It's kind of like being in Terminator. Time is twisting around itself.